Hey everyone, this is Chelsea with Savannah Wren Studio. And today for our Red Moon Women's Circle, I wanted to focus on relationships, social connections, as well as how to find one's community. Now, this is a subject that I have struggled with for probably the majority of my life, and that's mainly due to the fact that I either go all in and am, am extremely intense in my relationships, or I get distracted and accidentally allow fledgling relationships to wither over time. And I mean, it doesn't even have to be fledgling relationships. A lot of times it's just relationships in general. And I mean, I'm not making excuses for it, but you know, a lot of it does come down to my ADHD in particular. I really have this struggle with out of sight, out of mind. So if I am not interacting with a person on a pretty significantly regular basis, at very least on a weekly basis, then I tend to forget that they are in my life um, a lot of times. And so that it's really difficult to nurture relationships when you struggle with an out of sight, out of mind mentality, or you deprioritize friendships and just general relationships. And so, you know, some of the things that I wanted to focus on in this workshop today is discussing, you know, life as an adult, trying to have social connections, especially if you are a parent um, or a an introvert, but also breaking down what is a community for most of us and how we can find that community that is supportive for us and what it might look like for us because our community is going to be very individualized and uh, it's not going to look the same for across the board for all of us. So, you know, a little bit of um, background about my issues with relationships. I would say that for the most part, I tend to focus the vast majority of my awareness and mindfulness around relationships on a very small group of people. You know, I tend to be a very, I have maybe three to five friends that I consider my extremely close best friends. And then I have levels of friendships that, that expand out from there. And I have a tendency to categorize people based on how often I interact with them, what our interests are. Um, do we have much in common, you know, how do we, what does the energy feel like when we are interacting and when we are engaging with activities together. And so I tend to view a lot of my own social circles as either a concentric expanding ring of relationships with very close knit people in the center and then slowly moving outwards to close friends, friends, acquaintances, occasional interactions, strangers, things like that. But another way to look at how we interact with people 
in our lives is to view people as being part of your life tree. And so the way that I would explain this is that you have, you know, all of us have a tree that is made up of the people that are in our lives. And those closest interactions, the ones that we feel the deepest and put the most energy toward in equal measure, so that two-way street type of energy, is going to be the roots. These are not only yourself that's anchoring you to the ground, but those more limited number of people that are your rock and your go-to people that support you and accept you in all of its forms and they are what keep you here in this reality and make you feel safe and loved and supported. From there, you grow up to create trunk relationships. And these type of relationships are going to be foundational relationships that both nourish and sustain the two of you. So it's still that two-way street type of mentality and energy exchange whereby you are both supporting and uh, helping each other grow, you are nourishing each other on many levels, and you are empowering each other to work toward being your best selves. From there, you then branch out into, pun intended, branch relationships. These are going to be friends that you do interact with, it may be a little more fluctuated on the amount of energy that goes into it. Maybe you give a lot and they don't give the same amount as you do or vice versa. There's a little bit of um, one-way street type of energy. Not all the time, but more than, say, those trunk relationship friends. There's a little bit less equilibrium and a little bit more instability. And the way that I like to view branch relationships is that, you know, they're still there to support you and they still help you grow and branch out and expand your knowledge and your wisdom and your horizon. But more often than not, they're going to be a little bit more fair weather friends. So they're going to be there more often during the good times, but you really can't always trust that they'll be there in the rocky times. Just as tree branches uh, get blown around in storms and they may fall and break and crumble and shear off, some of these relationships can do the same because they are not as strong in a connection as those trunk and root relationships. And then the final relationship, which is more reserved for, say, acquaintances and people that you see on you know, a, a semi-regular basis, but you're not extremely close to them. Um, these are going to be more leaf relationships. So they're there to, you know, nourish you and help you grow, but they're only there for a season, for a little bit. And then they tend to fall away over time and there's nothing wrong with these types of relationships because but they're mainly there to help you with certain seasons 
of your life. And so, you know, those are two different kinds of patterns for the social connections that we as humans tend to create around us um, as we are experiencing our daily lives. And it's, you know, kind of how you choose to perceive your relationships. Maybe that ripple effect is a little bit more your style. Maybe the tree explanation is more your style. Or maybe there's a different way that you see your relationships. These two examples are um, better for me to visualize and incorporate into my life. Uh, before I go on, I did want to mention that there is a lot of different ways to label this idea of community. Of course, you know, you can use community depending on how you feel about that, but you can also use support networks, support systems, support people. Uh, in the yoga community, we might say Kula or Sangha. It just, it's, it's, it's really up to you how you characterize the people around you that support you, support your journey, and make you feel like you have a safe and secure space within your life to connect with others and feel like you belong. <clears throat> In general, I tend to use community a little bit more often. Occasionally, I use Kula. Um, if you uh, have been on this Facebook page, you will probably have noticed that I have a Savannah Rancula, which is my little online community that I keep to try to interact with people that are on a similar wavelength and have similar interests to myself or at the very least um, support me in some way that also supports them and their journeys. <clears throat> um, depending on how you feel, some people may use the term tribe, um, but I tend to not use that one um, out of respect for uh, in indigenous people, Native Americans, etc. Um, and I don't really use coven very often, mainly because I am a solitary practitioner for the most part, so community is really the one that I tend to go to. <clears throat> and the best way that I can describe a community is that it is a place, whether physical and tangible or intangible intang and, say, digital, where you feel safe, you get to interact with others that have something in common with you, so you feel like you have a sense of belonging. But what also makes a community is that it is supportive and empowering to your journey, your person, and your growth. So I don't... Um, I don't see specific communities that are abusive or um, manipulative as being a true community, uh, but that also is because of my own personal background. I prefer to believe that just like family, you choose your community, that you craft 
the community that you want and that you need in your life. <clears throat> and, you know, some of the best ways to do that is to step out of your comfort zone, meet new people, try new interests, talk to a wide variety of people, whether online or in person, to find people that you click with and find groups that you feel connected to. <clears throat> For the most part, I do not remember in my own life feeling truly part of a community until I was in my undergraduate and I was attending uh, the University of Kansas and I started to explore neo-paganism and I joined a college group called WPA or Wiccan Pagan Alliance and that was really the first time that I remember feeling like I had a supportive community that saw me for me you know before that yeah I had you know sports teams I played a lot of sports when I was in um, grade school through high school and you I felt like I was part of the team sometimes but I also really felt like a loner a lot of the times I didn't really have too much connection with schools in general you know yeah I went to this school and yeah I got a degree from that but I don't really feel that extended or expanded idea of community that I do see some alumni having um, I tend to be the type of person that likes to explore the boundaries of community within interests or values that are important to me. And so, you know, feeling a part of the pagan organization at KU was really profound for me and it was really my first attempt at supporting myself and supporting uh, others like me and you know I still talk to a lot of the individuals that I met in that group and that I consider friends um, and relatively close friends um, even if we don't talk on uh, as regular a basis as I would like or want I still feel a connection with them after that I felt a little bit of community in graduate school because all of us most of us graduate students at Oklahoma State University we were going through very similar things but it's one of those things again that graduate school is really not set up to be a long-lasting community I am so grateful for the friends that I came out with that 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 survived graduate school with me and I try to talk them to them as often as possible and I love them dearly but I wouldn't say that graduate school itself was a long-lasting type of community because we were always constantly coming in and out of each other's lives because that is how college is set up you unless you are able to stay in the region or you are able to engage on digital platforms you tend to lose people relatively quickly and th that's really hard um, if you're already struggling with connecting to others the next time that I really think that I found a 
community was when I became a mother and I started to connect with other mothers and other parents and we were going through the same types of things and we were able to talk and communicate and connect with our experience as parents um, and it was really helpful for me to feel like I was a part of a group of people that supported me and helped me grow as a person. Now, this group was Birth Connections in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and I am extremely glad that I had four years um, in that community uh, face to face and now I um, do still interact with them on a pretty regular basis uh, via Facebook and so I'm really um, grateful for that and for the connections that I uh, developed within that community. When we moved back up to the Kansas City Metro we had you know friendships that were from different parts of our lives from when I was going to um, undergrad and a couple of my grade school and high school friends and Stillwater friends we just kind of had a, a little sprinkling of connections back up here but we had to figure out where our community was going to be back here in Kansas City and while I am it's been about three years now and we're still trying to figure it out but a lot of times it does have to do with interests and values more than anything else my the community that I am the most grateful for is the women that I see and interact with through Sacred Earth Arts um, with our host Regina, our teacher Regina. I cannot tell you how amazing it feels to go to these groups and classes and feel like I am actually being heard and seen and embraced for my full self warts and all by these strong powerful women who are in a lot of ways just like me that are looking for community and finding it through their interests in healing and spiritual connection we you know we we gaming is a big one for us um, yoga community is a big one for me the spiritual healing community in Kansas City has been really great and most of all of that comes down to what I value what I prioritize and what my interests are when it comes to who I'm going to interact with and that is really what I advocate when it comes to finding your community is you know really taking stock of what are my main values for myself and for others um, and for my life in general what do I want to invite into my life what do I not really want to invite into my life you know how am I going to prioritize social relationships and those connections how much energy do I have to devote to my friendships my acquaintances and my community what am you know what is my motivation for these connections 
Am I looking for networking? Am I looking for uh, deep connections with friendships? Am I looking for more of a support group or um, a venting group? Or do I just need a community that I can have fun with and laugh with and not worry about what's going on in the world for a few moments. <clears throat> and the way that I look at it is that I do not see a difference between in-person community and digital community. I will tell you that I have groups and friends that are on Facebook that I feel like we are very good friends, that we are extremely close, but yet I've never met them in person um, or even maybe heard their voice in, you know, before. And so... I, st I firmly believe that digital connections are just as valuable and valid validating as in-person relationships. And I, I'll, I can tell you, you know, I, one of my um, biggest, uh, One of the things that I tend to do when I am needing a little bit of a boost in dopamine or something to just make me feel a little better, you know, maybe I'm waning energy or I'm having a rough day, is I tend to go into the wide variety of meme posting groups that I am associated with. And I am very selective on what groups I'm in because I want to know that I can trust the vast majority of people in those groups and that I can trust the moderators and the admin. And there's been times that I feel very connected and close to the members in those meme posting groups. And we'll have deep conversations about a meme that we are following. Um, you know, for instance, one of my favorites that I uh, routinely engage with is the Emperor's New Groove meme posting group. And the admin try very hard to make that a supportive, nurturing, safe place for all their members to feel valued and validated. And that is one of those really important values that I have for myself that I am trying my hardest to be a supportive person that that expresses that how much I val value you as a person and I try very hard to cultivate sacred, safe space around my person so that I can be supportive for others and empowering for their journey. And so I, because of those values that I have, I tend to gravi gravitate toward groups uh, online or in person that have that similar value. Now, you know, I gave the example of Emperor's New Groove meme posting. The opposite example would be that I went into a meme, meme group that was called um, Bug Posting. And it was technically revolved around Starship Troopers. And, you know, some of the memes were really funny, but there was a lot of times that it was a very toxic hostile and abusive environment and I chose not to 
integrate myself into that community because they had values that did not line up with my values. And so I deprioritized it and I prioritized interactions that were healthier for my mental and emotional health. And so I try to focus on that same dynamic when it comes to in-person interactions. I used to be a very codependent individual, uh, particularly around friends. I had extreme abandonment attachment, um, attachment issues whereby I felt on a constant basis, I mean like daily basis, if not multiple times a day, that if I didn't say the perfect thing, if I angered anyone in any way or displeased them in any way, that I would be cut off and abandoned immediately by these individuals that I considered to be friends and particularly close friends. And so I had a lot of trauma around that. The idea that I was disposable and because of that traumatic expense, um, experience that I had in middle school and especially in high school, I um, tended to fawn routinely to people that I wanted to be friends with or that I was friends with. I continuously masked my own personality and tried to conform to what I thought that they wanted as a way to keep from being kicked to the curb. Uh, and so there was a lot of times that I felt like I would lose myself as a means to be friends with others or to attempt to integrate myself into a community. And it wasn't until about three years ago, around um, almost four years ago now in 2017, that I really started to question, you know, why am I doing this? Why am I worried about people dropping me as a friend, if they're going to drop me as a, as a friend, they're going to do it and I have no real control over that. Um, I, you know, I still have a, I do have a, a pretty big issue with ghosting, but again, that's not my issue. Um, that says more about someone else than it does about me in most cases. And I started trying to reframe what I considered community and what I considered relationships to focus on removing expectations and attachments for other people's behavior and for their use of their energy and their priorities and really saying, you know what, if they want me in their life, they will reach out to me. If I want them in my life, I will reach out to them. I will interact with them. And I will also work on cultivating relationships that I feel strongly about and that I feel a connection that is so deep that I can feel the chords being created between us. Um, now that may seem uh, that may seem a little abstract, but you know I want to you know, give you a little bit more of a concrete example of this. So, for instance, uh, there was a person that I met through 
Sacred Earth Arts, uh, multiple people that I met through Sacred Earth Arts that I instantly felt a connection with and we had so much in common and I instantly adored them and adored, you know, everything about them and accepted them for the awesome person that they are and when I would speak to them it felt mutual there was this exchange of energy and of thoughts and emotions that you could literally feel us connecting and that tangible feel of connecting with another person on such a deeper level is indescribable how important that felt for me and I am extremely grateful to experience it and whenever I do f feel that um, in whatever group that I'm in I take that cue from the universe as a nudge that hey this person will be good for your life and you'll be good for their life and let's just kind of push it together and see how the the molecules and the energy flies and that is I absolutely love that you know there's been times that I've been around people where I instantly am like Ugh, I don't I there there's something about your energy it clashes with my energy it's draining it's exhausting to be around you or to engage with you and you know when I was younger I used to think oh I just means I've got to lean into it I've just I have to make them my friend and I need to do whatever I have to to make sure that they like me and and that was a boundary issue that I was violating within myself because I knew that that the relationship wasn't going to be a healthy one but I continued to try to make a relationship despite that feeling because I was afraid of not being liked being abandoned and not feeling like I belonged in a community so it's you know I have talked a lot about you know feeling the connections and how do you pick your relationships and your community how do you find it how do you establish it you know the other side of the coin is that relationships come with boundaries uh, boundaries for yourself boundaries for others and boundaries can be really hard sometimes you know whether it's because you want to be liked or you want to help others or you need you know have some some kind of toxic traits that um, are, are swirling around you that need a little bit of shadow work to release and so you know those boundary issues are something that we can all be mindful about when as we create our relationships and as we create our communities there are you know depending on what type of values you have and what type of prior priorities you have boundaries can be you know they can be hard hard set boundaries or they might be a little bit more permeable or malleable you know for me because of my instinctual desire for fairness inclusivity and um, 
justice when communities or large groups of people within a community violate a boundary that I have around kindness, compassion, empathy, and inclusivity, that tends to be a very hard boundary for me, and I will usually immediately remove myself. Now, this is um, what happened to me when I was little and I was part of Christianity and I removed myself at a very young age because of multiple boundary violations that I witnessed and things that did not line up with my values. And I've also experienced this within the yoga community when you, I hear uh, sexual assault and sexual harassment allegations against prominent yogis and yoga instructors. I tend to immediately be like, well, I'm, I'm not going to engage with that section of the community because I... I see that if you are, if you're willing to support the person that violates trust and violates boundaries, then there's something within you that resonates with them. I have a really difficult time separating artists and art. Um, so there's been a lot of times that I will choose to remove myself from communities based on issues around uh, violations of trust and violations of boundaries. And, you know, that's just me. You, you know, your journey with and your interaction with communities um, is going to be different, and I want to emphasize that I'm not here to tell you how to, or, you know, who to choose as your community, um, or how to interact with that community, or any form of gatekeeping aspects with regards to the community that you are involved in. I'm just explaining how community works within my life. <clears throat> the last thing that I want to discuss around this topic of creating community and creating relationships and creating a sense of belonging and connection is how do you maintain those connections and those relationships when you become an adult? When you're a child, it's a little bit easier to maintain connections and relationships and friendships because the vast majority of you are going, you know, are probably going to be at the same school or in the same grade at the very least, maybe the same sports. And so there's this constant, um, almost everyday interaction with the people that you're choosing to be part of your life and part of your community. When you graduate high school and you move off to college um, and become an adult, become a parent, it becomes more and more difficult to maintain relationships because now you have so many things that are vying for your attention. And the way that I view adulthood is that you're standing in the middle of a crowded room and every single person in that crowded room 
is yelling and screaming for your attention. And so you have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people trying to get your attention and you're hearing all of them and you're trying to pay attention to as many people as you can and some things are going to get lost in the crowd or some people in this example are going to get lost in the crowd because you don't have the energy, the time, and the resources or spoons to prioritize every single person that's in that room vying for your attention. And so the older you get and the more your life changes to incorporate more priorities, the, the harder it is to maintain relationships if you are not prioritizing them. Now, I'm not saying that it's your fault because, I mean, it's so easy to accidentally deprioritize relationships when you are just trying to survive the day. When you're trying to get up for for work, you're trying to feed yourself, you're trying to find time for exercise and all the chores around the house or your apartment. If you have kids or pets, you're trying to keep them alive and healthy and safe. You're trying to go to work and doing all the deadlines for your job and you're worrying about budgeting and financing everything and making sure that you have all your basic needs for survival covered. If you have time in between all of that, you might be like, I want to read a little bit. I want to watch a little TV. I want to go for a drink with my friends or I just want to go have a drink by myself. I'm, I want to go see a movie at the movie theater. I want to go shopping. I want to draw or play music or do art or go play in sports or whatever. And so with all that just sitting on your shoulders, there it can be very difficult to find the time to, one, create new relationships and new friends or to maintain the dynamics that you have with the friends that you are able to prioritize and make time for. And so what I wanted to mention about this is that I really tend to see my relationships a little bit like a garden. You know, I plant the seed of a friendship. I try to water it, give it attention, give it sunlight, give it the resources that it needs to grow and flourish. And main and maintain focus on the relationships that are truly important to me and be, and because of my out of sight out of mind wiring in my brain i tend to do this by making sure that i write individuals that I want to try to contact each week on my to-do list. And I'm seeing if I have a to-do list right here and that I can use as an example. Um, yeah, here's one. So, you know, I've brought this up a couple of times. You know, I, I tend to have a weekly uh, to-do list whereby, you know, there's different sections of things that I prioritize, you know, meditation, yoga, photography, work, my health, 
um, any kind of gardening, homesteading things, my priority for my kids, my spiritual priority. And then I also have a section of priority for my friends who I want to really try to connect with that week. Now, as you can see, <laughs> unfortunately, the week of March 29th through April 4th, I had about 12 people that I wanted to reach out to and try to connect with either via a text message or um, having a conversation with them on the phone or Zoom or whatever. And I didn't get to any of them that week. Um, but I try really hard that that if I'm gonna put you on, if I'm gonna put my friend on the list, I'm going to make that a priority as because giving something my attention means that I'm taking time out of my day, energy out of my day to connect with that person. And that's really hard when you are stretched th so thin as an adult, especially as a parent. Um, but every single week, I still create a list of people that I want to try to reach out to, and I try my hardest um, to follow through, and sometimes it happens, and sometimes it doesn't, but I'm trying to make sure that I have that person and our connection and our relationship at the front of my mind so that I'm not leaving that relationship to wither and die. Because for me, that's much harder on me emotionally and mentally than if we had gotten into a fight and broke up as friends. And so I, I try really hard to make sure that I am leaving myself clues so that I make the effort and that I remind myself to make the effort. And so that is a kind of long-winded way of basically saying that the way to nurture and maintain your relationships and your relationships to your community is through mindfulness of your attentions, your priorities, and how much energy you have to give to those individuals and how much time you have to give to those individuals. And it's always going to fluctuate. Some weeks you can talk to 10 of your friends and the next week you only get to one and two months from from now, maybe you actually were able to talk to 23 of your really close friends and acquaintances. Or you were able to go for a friends weekend. Or you went to a event with the community of your choosing. It all boils down to where are you putting your energy and your attention. So that's, you know, really what I wanted to discuss today. I wanted to tell you that if you feel like you are struggling making friends, keeping friends, being part of a community, that's okay. Your feelings are valid. It's not your fault. 
being an adult is really hard with everything that we have to juggle in the air. And so give yourself grace and compassion when it comes to your relationships. Baby steps, small exchanges of energy, small conversations, small moments of awareness and attention are just as valid, just as supportive, and just as cherished as if you had all the energy in the world and all the time to pour into relationships. It's not a competition and it's not a contest just to see how many connections you can have, how deep connect your connections are compared to others. It's literally just about experiencing what life has to offer and finding people that you enjoy the ride with. I would rather ride the roller coaster of life with people that I connect with on an extremely deep level than not ride it at all and stand on the sidelines wishing that I was riding the roller coaster. So I hope this workshop has been enlightening, supportive, even empowering, healing for you. If you enjoy my content, you know, feel free to like my Facebook page, Savannah Rain Studio, or check out my YouTube channel, Savannah Rain Studio, you know, and like and share, subscribe to my videos. And if you really want to if you really like my content and you really want to support me more than just liking my stuff, you can always check me out on Patreon at Savannah Wren Studio or under my name, Chelsea Medlock, and be part of that community that I'm working so hard to create that is on a very personal level with me. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you at the end of the month for Messy Yoga Mom workshop. Uh, it's going to be about clutter, which... Um, it's definitely going to be a interesting workshop, and I hope you'll join me for that. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye, everyone.